talk about radians. Now radians are not as intuitive to us as degrees because we grew up working with degrees, right? Um, and degrees are useful to us, but they are very cumbersome and awkward whenever we try to do calculus or advanced mathematics or science. Radians are much more elegant, so we just have to become more fluent with them. And they're really not that bad if we just think about the circle and if we think about breaking that circle up into fractions. So everybody at home, let's stand up and do the circle dance. Here we go. Zero degrees, not surprisingly, is the same as zero radians. All right, 180 degrees, that's pi radians. 360 degrees, that's two pi radians. Again, not surprising, the circumference of a circle with a radius of one is two pi. This all makes sense. So if I have pi radians here, then half pi is going to be here, 90 degrees. A quarter of pi is going to be 45 degrees. Let's see, if this is 180 degrees, which is pi, what would a third of pi be? Well, that would be a third of 180. That's 60 degrees. So pi over 3 is the same as 60 degrees. You see how that works? All right, so let's just start by filling in this circle with our radian measures. I'm going to start with the half, so zero radians. This is 1 half pi, which we often write as just pi over 2. So there's half pi. Here's pi. You can think of that as 2 over 2, if you want. Here's 3 halves pi. It's the same as 270. And a full circle, 2 pi. OK? Let's go to our quarters now. Boink. Well, we already decided that a fourth of pi is 45 degrees. So that makes sense. That's going to be pi over 4. Hey, let's keep on going. We have 1 fourth pi, 2 fourths pi. Mr. Haas, what would we call that? 3 fourths, Three fourths pi. Mr. Haas just walked in. 4 fourths pi, 5 fourths pi. So if you notice, all of our 45 degree angles are all in terms of fourths. That makes sense. OK, let's go to our 60 degrees. We already decided that a third of 180 is 60. So that's going to be a third of pi, pi over 3 radians. Fantastic. So let's go through our thirds. One third pi, two thirds pi, or two pi over three. Three, pi, three thirds pi, also known as one pi. Four thirds pi, four pi over three. Five thirds pi, five pi over three, and six thirds pi. All right, you're kind of getting the hang of what we're doing here. Let's do 30 degrees. Let's see. 30 degrees is what fraction of 180? Everybody on the audience? One sixth. A sixth. So 30 degrees is going to be a sixth of pi, or pi over 6. All right, a lot of these have different names. 1 sixth, 2 sixths, 3 sixths, 4 sixths. Here's 5 sixths pi, which is the same as 150. 6 six, 7 pi over 6. 8, 9, 10, 11 pi over 6. OK? So here we have our nice circle in radians. So I will tell you right now, if I have something like 3 pi over 4, I don't think, OK, let's convert that into degrees. Oh, that's 135 degrees. No, I think 3 fourths pi. That has a 4 in the denominator. My reference angle is going to be a 45, 45, 90. It's 3 fourths pi, which is just shy of 4 fourths pi. So I'm in the second quadrant. It is easier to kind of just embrace being in radians rather than trying to convert back and forth all the time. 
So let's try a few. Let's do a few examples, shall we? If I wanted to evaluate the sine of 2 pi over 3, again, I could try to convert this to degree land, but I'm not going to. I'm going to embrace radians. So here we go. The denominator is a 3. Okay, so I know that my reference triangle is going to be a pi over 3 angle, and a third of 180 is 60 degrees. So as soon as I see that 3 in that denominator, I know I have a 60 degree reference angle. Now all I have to figure out is what quadrant I'm in. 2 thirds, well that's less than 1. And it's one third less than one. So I'm in the second quadrant with a 60 degree reference angle. Now, I am using degrees there just because 30, 60, 90, I'm used to. I'm going to put a square root of three there, a negative one here, a two. This is the reference triangle version that I prefer. If you want, of course, you can call that one, this negative one half, this square root of three over two, whatever you like. So the sine of 2 pi over 3, y over r, it's the square root of 3 over 2. That would be my answer. OK? All right, what if I'm doing, uh, I don't know, the tan of 11 pi over 6? OK, I look at the denominator. It's a 6. What's a 6 of pi? Well, Pi is the same as 180. That's 30 degrees. So I know my reference angle is going to be 30 degrees. All I have to figure out is what quadrant I'm in. 11 sixths. Well, you could do, let's see, this is 6 sixths. This is 12 sixths. 12 divided by 6 is 2, 2 pi. So 11 sixths is going to be in the fourth quadrant, just shy of 2 pi, 12 over 6. You see how nice this is? I have a 30, 60, 90. I'm going to call the radius 2. Opposite the 30 is the 1. It's going to be a negative 1 since I'm going down. This is going to be square root of 3. So the tan will be y over x, which is negative 1 over the square root of 3. And there's your answer. Not too bad. By the way, lots of times when you have an answer like this, where you have a radical in the denominator, we sometimes talk about rationalizing the denominator. You don't have to do that for me, but it's good to, to know, just in case you see it. Basically, I'm just going to multiply by a handy form of 1, which we do a lot in math, to make the numerator Sorry, to make the denominator something rational, something nice, in other words. So you could write this answer, the tan of 11 pi over 6, either as negative 1 over the square root of 3 or as negative square root of 3 over 3. They're equivalent. How about the cosine of 5 pi over 4? Let's look at the denominator. It's a fourth. A fourth of pi, that's 45 degrees. So I know 45 degrees will be my reference angle. What quadrant am I in? Five fourths, that's bigger than four fourths. Four fourths is one pi, right? Four fourths pi is one pi. So boink, that's going to be in the third quadrant, 45 degree reference angle. I like calling my radius 2, which makes both of these sides the square root of 2. Of course, I'm going to the left in the x, so that's negative. I'm going down to my y, so that's negative. I have my picture. Cosine is my x over my r. And there we have it. So with radians, focus on the denominator. That tells you how big your reference angle is. Then look at your whole ratio. Use that to help you figure out what quadrant you're in. Okay? A little trick, of course, if your numerator is bigger than your denominator, you know you're either in the third or the fourth quadrant. If your numerator is smaller, oh, that means you're less than one pi. You're either in the first or the second quadrant. Okay? 
As with anything else new, practice this. You want to become fluent with these because they're going to show up a lot in your future if you carry on in math and in science. And they're fun. All right. Hope this was helpful.